Back in the 1800s of Australia, diggers, thousands of them, would have been busting to get right here, right to the centre of Hill End. Whether they'd be walking on foot or on horseback, everyone dying to get at one stage or another to Hill End. This is the top of Clark Street. Clark Street, our famous quarter mile of nothing but businesses and buildings. I'm telling you, back then, it would have rivaled Pitt Street today. It had everything up and down this street. It had Patrick Coyle's clubhouse, this massive two-story swinging saloon, uh, something straight out of a Western movie. It would have had tobacconists, about 28 pubs even, just in Hill End itself. Banks, watchmakers, uh, bootmakers, the list goes on. And you know what? They are all here for, and I've said it before, and you're going to hear it again. They are all here for gold. I say to many people that wherever there was a counter in Hill End, there were gold scales. A bit like our FPOS machine today. Don't get me wrong, residents of Hill End and Tambarura, they had notes and coins and money, but we were blessed here with gold. We really were because there were gold scales at every single counter. Didn't matter what type of a shop it was. Uh, we were using gold as currency back then in this area of Hill End. We got really lucky, me and Henry. We had an old fella in Hill End lend us graciously. We are accepted. He lent us a four ounce nugget for viewing for our YouTube channel. I am completely ecstatic to show you guys this four ounce nugget. It is just a solid piece of gold. The diggers back then, they would have been finding stuff like this regularly. Um, me and Henry will probably be hard pressed to see that or find that uh, again in our lives. So we really do thank the old fella for lending that to us. Ah, back then the diggers, there's even records saying on a newspaper or somewhere at a mining report that they reckon there was more gold going out in the boots or in the tucker boxes than that was actually making it to the treasury in some of the mines here in Hill End. So it's just great to see. We brought the scales. Come on over, Henry. We're going to weigh this up for the channel just to prove it is a four ounce nugget. Um, I've got my $2 coin here. And uh, I must note, this is the first time these scales have been put into ounces. We normally just weigh our gold in grams. I just am ex oh, I'm really nervous about even handling or holding this. 4.3 ounces. That is just completely awesome to be able to view and to hold this. Ah, that is just amazing. You want to have a feel, Henry? Yeah, yes. definitely. Look at that. Wow. That you can really, really feel the weight. In There's country. about 10 grand worth of gold he's holding in his hands right now. This is where it's at. Yeah, we're blessed. Wow. Okay. We're going to take some really good photos of that. I know you don't want to see our ugly mugs holding it, but I'm going to be all over this with the camera and uh, you'll, get, you'll get plenty of pictures because that is just awe-inspiring. Before we go, we're going to wrap up with a bit of a hot lap in Hill End. Me and Gurley are going to start at the pub, one of the most iconic landmarks of uh, Hill End here. And we're going to come down Tambarura Road, down Short Street, as I've mentioned in a previous episode. And we're going to come screaming up Clark Street, which I just talked about then. Hey, I'll show you this saddle really quickly, because I bet you, uh, some of you might just be curious. It'll only be 10 seconds. This saddle here isn't my usual stock saddle. I'm using an early 1900s military saddle uh, that was actually used in the light cavalry in uh, the First World War. I did a bit of work for my old man, a lot of horse work, and uh, he didn't pay me in money, he paid me in kindness, and uh, it breaks my heart today to view it, because he's got a saddle like it. When I was a teenager, I used to ride it with it all the time, and always wished I wanted one myself, you know, always wish I got one, and uh, finally, this thing's only a year old, not even, so I'm still breaking the leather in it, but you can see it's got hinges at the top here that swivel and move with the horse and it's above the horse it's not sitting on the horse so it's very comfortable uh, comfortable for horse 
and for rider itself. And it's light when you're traveling on horseback or even motorbike. Weight is everything. This hardly weighs anything and it's aerodynamic, cools the horse down. We're gonna fly, I reckon. Let's see what happens. Come on, girly. Before me and girly do this bit of a hot lap in Hill End, I'll explain that we're gonna overlap it with a poem. The Hill End poem. A lot of people might not know its origins. Uh, I believe I'm told that it was by Bob Sibley back in 1951 for the Hill End Centenary Festival. And uh, it was to commemorate Hill End and the gold that was found here. And it does speak of the history of the place, of the road, the gold, and of the farmers. As we were a prosperous town of gold back in the 1800s, and uh, now we're more of a ghost town. Of, yeah, ghost town of farmers, of sheep and cattle. Anyway, the poem begins. After miles of winding driving through a thick and tangled scrub, you finally arrive before an unpretentious pub with houses gathered around it, with roofs that sag and bend, where you've had your introduction to the place we call Hill End. A wild woolly boom town in days gone by, I'm told, where our forefathers fought and wrecked their health for gold. But not without some small success, old timers will relate. It was here they found a specimen that weighed 600 weight. But now the gold is almost gone, from where the hillside's steep and where the miners used to toil are now countless grazing sheep. But these that shared in wealth prevail, we hope that they increase. But when the gold is disappeared, we'll still have the golden fleece. I've been coming to the Hill End pub, an iconic landmark of Hill End, ever since I was a youngster. I remember Dad let me go in on New Year's Eve to join in on the festivities, there was a band, there were the school kids that I played with, and they even had fireworks at the lookout at Board Hill. It was a magical place then, still a magical place now. Finally, the truth about the world's largest single mass of gold, the man behind it, and the area involved. More so, gold's intricacies, simply explained so a better understanding for geology and where to find it in the new documentary, Gold and B.O. Halterman. Not your normal presentation, full of new information.